What's going on everyone? Mr. Octagonal here and today we have a very special video kicking off season two of the three minutes on the clock podcast series and this series deals with the NFL NBA drafts. I upload mocks and big boards so our main focus up until late April is the NFL draft. There will be some NBA videos mixed in here and there but my main focus right now is on the upcoming 2020 NFL draft. So this mock draft will be two rounds. There are no trades. I will be having trades in future mocks. Before this first one, I decided not to have any. Also, this is a mock draft of what I think will happen, not what I think should happen. So this is not what I would do if I was these teams. This is just my predictions of what will be happening. Obviously, you're going to disagree with some of these selections. So instead of disliking and raging in the comment section, I think it'd be better if we had a healthy discussion on why your opinion differs from mine. And people who say that they think I should agree with them just because, that would make sports boring if we all agreed on everything. That'd make life boring too. The fun part of this is that we're not going to agree on everything. So rather than being upset with me that I didn't mock the guy that you wanted to your team, we can have a healthy discussion in the comment section below. Also, the draft order is not final yet. We do have playoffs to go through. So for example, this mock draft has the Baltimore Ravens picking at 32. This does not mean the Ravens will end up with the 32nd pick. This is just a projection. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. With the first pick, I have the Bengals selecting Joe Burrow, quarterback, Oklahoma, from now until April, I don't think there will be much suspense with this pick. I do not expect this pick to change in my mock. I think it will just be Joe Burrow to the Bengals at one. End of story. Burrow is the guy here. He has that it factor. He has that swagger, that confidence, and that mentality when he goes on the field. And I think he is absolutely the best quarterback in this class. I think he's ready for the NFL. And I think this is a phenomenal selection for the Bengals. I think they have their franchise quarterback in Mr. Joe Burrow. With the second pick, the Washington Redskins select Chase Young, edge rusher, Ohio State. Some people thought he'd stay in school. He announced yesterday that he's declaring, which obviously did not surprise me one bit. I don't know why people believed that bogus rumor from TMZ. But nonetheless, this is a home run for the Redskins. Chase Young is the best player in this draft class. In my opinion, he is a generational pass rusher, better than the likes of Nick and Joey Bosa, I believe, coming out of college. I think the Redskins have a guy that they can absolutely build around on their defense. And even though they have more glaring needs than edge rusher and defensive line, I think the Redskins would be crazy to pass up Chase Young here at two. So now this is where the draft, I think, gets interesting at pick three where the Detroit Lions are on the clock. I am personally a Lions fan, by the way. So I guess that adds to the layer of fun in this scenario. And there are many ways the Lions could go. I expect the Lions to trade down to five, six, or seven. All three of those teams need a quarterback. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions move out of this selection. And I think they'd be crazy not to. But this is a mock draft with no trades. So the Lions have to stay at three, and there are a number of guys they could look at, but I really think it comes down to two at this point, Jeff Okuda and Derek Brown, with Isaiah Simmons maybe being the wild card. And I think as of right now, I think Okuda would be the pick. Darius Slay's future in Detroit is sort of in question, and even if he does stick around, I do think the Lions want to have him paired up with someone better, and that can be Okuda. Personally, I think if we draft Okuda, I think Slay is probably going to get traded because the Lions don't have awful corners behind Slay. Rashawn Melvin is likely gone, but we got Justin Coleman in the slot and then Amani Oruwarie, the fifth rounder last year, who has shown a ton of flashes and I'd be extremely comfortable with starting him on the outside alongside Slay or in this case, Jeffrey Okuda. Okuda is easily the best cornerback in this draft class, and there are a bunch of great corners, but I think this is definitely the first one who will be going off the board. Pick four, the New York Giants. They have a few ways they could go. The Giants have plenty of needs on both sides of the ball, but I think they have to address offensive line, and to be more specific, the offensive tackle spot. They could look at a guy like Jedrick Willis or Tristan Wirfs. However, I think Andrew Thomas is the pick here. I think he's the best tackle in this class. He has an extremely high floor, and you need to get a blindside player 
for Daniel Jones. Jones showed a ton of potential as a rookie, but he's still extremely raw and has a long way to go. So I think the Giants should look at offensive line here. They could look at a guy like Jerry Judy, but I think Andrew Thomas would be a better pick here at four. Number five, the Miami Dolphins select Tua Tungavailoa, quarterback from Alabama. Tua is the biggest wild card in this draft class for me personally. He is announcing his decision on Monday, whether he will be returning to school or not. Personally, I think he will declare, and I think he should declare. I don't see a reason for him to return to Alabama. I still expect him to be a really high pick, and the Dolphins have had their sights on him for years, and even though their tank didn't necessarily work, and I'm not going to say it didn't work, they just didn't lose as many games as I think they were expecting. I don't think any of us expected them to win five games. And credit to Brian Flores and the coaching staff for having them win five games. But nonetheless, I still think they end up with Tua regardless. I'm not as high on Tua as other people regardless of the injury situation. I think he's a little bit overrated as a prospect and obviously many injury questions, most notably that hip that he injured against Mississippi State. So I would probably not pick Tua here if I was the Dolphins. I think there's just way more questions than answers with him, but I do think they pick him at five. Pick six, the Los Angeles Chargers select Justin Herbert, quarterback from Oregon. Phillip Rivers was not good this year. We're going to keep that simple. Phillip Rivers took a massive step down, and he is really starting to decline. He is also an impending free agent, and I don't think the Chargers have a ton of motives to bring him back. Personally, I do think Phillip Rivers will be a Charger next year, but they still have to draft a guy behind him or to compete with him. And I think that will be Justin Herbert. Herbert has been a mixed bag, I would say, at Oregon with a lot more ups than downs. But I do think there are still a few questions about him. I would have liked to see him play a little bit better this year personally. Not that he's a bad quarterback or anything. He's great. And as an Oregon Duck fan, I love Justin Herbert. He's phenomenal. But I would have liked to see him take a little bit more steps and strides from last year. And while I think Herbert is a great uh, quarterback, he's probably my number two quarterback on the board. I still think, like Tua, he's a little bit overrated. I don't think he's as overrated as Tua. And I don't think this is a bad pick here for the Chargers. But I just don't think Justin Herbert has a super high ceiling. Number seven, the Carolina Panthers select Derek Brown, defensive tackle from Auburn. I think the Panthers will absolutely look at a quarterback this offseason. I don't think Cam Newton will stick around, and I don't think they want to start Kyle Allen or Will Greer week one next season. But with Tua and Herbert off the board, I don't expect them to reach for a guy like Jordan Love or Jalen Hurts. So for now, I have them picking what many people believe is the best player available in Derek Brown. I don't think he's the best player on the board personally, but I don't think he's a bad prospect by any means. And the Panthers get a guy they can build around on their defensive line. It's on Terry Poe, Kawan Short. They're not getting any younger. Same with Gerald McCoy. All of those guys are decent, but they're not getting any younger. So having a guy you can build around on your defense alongside your first round pick last year on Brian Burns, who was excellent as a rookie. I think this is a pretty solid pick for Carolina. Get your guy in the interior of the D-line. Get yourself a run stuffer and help guys like Brian Burns get to the quarterback. And then pick eight, the Arizona Cardinals select Jedrick Willis, offensive tackle from Alabama. I think the Cardinals have to go offense. I think they have to build around Kyler Murray. While sort of like the Giants, they could go ahead and get themselves a top target, like a Jerry Judy, like CeeDee Lamb. However, Kyler was running for his life like a madman last year. The Cardinals have to go offensive tackle, and I think they're going to go with Jedrick Willis from Bama. Willis has been probably the biggest riser in this entire draft class this season, and I think he's absolutely worthy of a top 10 selection, and I think this is a great pick here at 8 for Arizona. Get yourselves a franchise tackle for your franchise quarterback. Pick number 9, I have the Jaguars selected Isaiah Simmons linebacker, safety, whatever you want to view him as out of Clemson. Simmons is one of my favorite players in this draft class, and I don't see him getting picked any lower than this selection. And I think this is an excellent value pick for the Jaguars. Simmons can play multiple positions, obviously. He did in Clemson, and he did at a high level. Not to mention the athleticism is off the charts. He will be breaking records come combine time. I'm talking about that Byron Jones Taylor Mays elite level of athleticism. Yeah, Taylor Mays didn't really do all that well in the NFL, 
but he's still a phenomenal athlete, one of the best this league has ever seen, and I think there's a chance Isaiah Simmons will be put in that conversation. The Jaguars linebacking court needs help. Miles Jack is good, but after that, they don't have much. Telvin Smith is an excellent player, but his NFL career is really in question right now, and I don't see him coming back. So, not to mention with Yannick Ngakwe leaving, the Jaguars' defense will need help. Obviously, Isaiah Simmons isn't an edge rusher like Ngakwe, but I think Jacksonville has to go with the best defensive player available, and that is Isaiah Simmons. Pick 10, Cleveland Browns select Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle Iowa. The Browns have to address their offensive line. That's their big weakness. Get themselves a franchise offensive tackle in Tristan Wirfs, and I think their offense will be a lot better next season. Wirfs has probably the best athleticism out of any tackle in this class, or at least some of the best athleticism. I think he has arguably the highest ceiling for any offensive lineman in the class. That's a little bit debatable, but I do think his ceiling is extremely high, and I think the Browns have a chance at landing a superstar tackle here in Tristan Wirfs. Number 11, New York Jets select C.D. Lamb, wide receiver Oklahoma. This pick could be an offensive lineman. The Jets need offensive linemen desperately, but with Tristan Wirfs off the board, I think picking any offensive lineman would be a reach here. And they do need to get themselves a dynamic playmaker for Sam Darnold. And I think they had their choice in this scenario between C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy. I have them going with Lamb. I think Judy's stock has dropped just a tiny bit this year. And C.D. Lamb is a burner. He has more athleticism than Judy. While I would personally pick Jerry Judy in this scenario, you can't really go wrong with C.D. Lamb either. And I think C.D. Lamb can be a huge addition to this Jets offense. Pick 12, the Oakland slash Las Vegas Raiders. I guess we can refer to them as the Vegas Raiders now. They get Jerry Judy, wide receiver from Alabama. Judy's been a little bit inconsistent at times, but he played great in the Citrus Bowl. And I think this is Amari Cooper, but probably a little bit better. I think Amari Cooper's a tiny bit overrated. And while I don't think the Raiders are trying to draft the next Amari Cooper, I think Jerry Judy has a similar skill set, but I do think he's a little bit better. If Judy just gets a little bit more consistent, I think he can be one of the top receivers in the NFL sometime. And I think this will be a very fun pick for the new look Raiders moving into a new stadium. You want to sell tickets. Why not get another dynamic playmaker for your offense? Pick 13, Indianapolis Colts select Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle from South Carolina. Quarterback could be a position the Colts look at, but I still think it's too high for Jordan Love, and it's certainly too high for Jalen Hurts. It's also too high for a guy like Jake Fromm and Jacob Eason, but I don't think we can talk about Fromm and Eason going in round one. Kinlaw is debatably the best player on the board. I don't think he is personally, but I do think he is really good. The Colts need someone in the interior of that defensive line. And they've invested a f decent amount of picks onto the D-line and edge rushers these past couple of years. Guys like Ben Benogu, Tyquan Lewis. Uh, they drafted someone else in the second round of 2018. Kamoko Turai, that's his name. None of those guys have been that great. And I think getting a guy like Ken Law, who is a safe pick here at 13, get someone in the middle of your defense who can stuff for run. Ken Law is also a pretty solid pass rusher. So I think this is a nice pick for Indy. Pick 14, Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Mekki Becton, offensive tackle from Louisville. This is probably a surprising pick for some, but I do think Mekki Becton has the chance to be really good. Currently, he's a popular second round pick in mock drafts, maybe a third round, but I think his stock will surge these next couple of months. Becton has been a great player at Louisville. I think he'll test extremely well at the Combine, and I do think the Bucks really need to get themselves an offensive tackle. I think Jameis is not the answer at quarterback, but regardless of who they start their next season, I do think they need someone who can be their franchise left tackle. Donovan Smith is just not the answer. Pick 15, Denver Broncos select Grant Delpit, safety from LSU. I don't think they're going to bring back Justin Simmons because I think Simmons wants top safety money. And Simmons has been a one-year wonder. I'm not saying he's been bad before this year, but he really broke out this season. And before this year, he was just an all-right starting safety. This year, he played like a top safety. And I don't think the Broncos want to pay him top safety money. So I expect him to leave. And this is their replacement for Justin Simmons and Grant Delpit. Delpit had a little bit of a step down this year, and I do think his stock took a tiny hit, but he is still a great, great player. I think this is extremely good value here at 15 for the Broncos. 
and they are getting themselves a building block in that secondary. And I do think their secondary will look a lot different with Justin Simmons likely gone. Chris Harris is an impending free agent. So I do think the secondary will change next year and getting a guy like Delpit, I think is an excellent selection. The pick 16, the Atlanta Falcons select AJ Epinesa, edge rusher from Iowa. The Falcons need to build an identity on defense. Dan Quinn is a defensive minded coach and they have talent on that side of the ball. Deion Jones, Devontae Campbell, when healthy, Keanu Neal, all good players, but I think they need a dynamic pass rusher. They've invested multiple first-round picks in their pass rush the past couple years, and it hasn't really worked out. Vic Beasley is not the answer. Tack McKinley is a guy who I like a lot, but we've been waiting for him to break out for a while, and he hasn't done that yet. And even if Tack McKinley does break out, I think they need another edge rusher. Epinesa can play inside as a 3-4 end. He can play with his hand in the dirt. And I think while he was a little bit worse this year than he was last year when it comes to getting to the quarterback, I think Epinesa is a good enough run stopper with his pass rushing abilities to make this a nice pick here at 16 for Atlanta. With the 17th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Paulson Adebo, cornerback from Stanford. I assume their top target was Delpit. He's obviously just been taken. And I think they have to focus on the secondary. Paulson Adebo, in my opinion, is a boomer bust player. I think he has a very high ceiling, but I do think he has a pretty low floor. And 17 might be a bit high compared to other mark drafts. Some people are going to have guys like Christian Fulton and Sean Wade ahead of him. But personally, I think this is a solid spot for Paulson Adebo. And if the Cowboys can improve that secondary to go with an already pretty talented defense, I think they'll be a lot better next year especially with Byron Jones likely leaving. I think the Cowboys should make it a priority that he returns. But while I think they're going to put more of their focus into Dak and Cooper and Byron Jones is likely gone, they're going to need a replacement. Pick 18, Miami Dolphins select Creed Humphrey, a center from Oklahoma. The Dolphins need to improve the offensive line and they have to go for the best offensive lineman available here in my opinion. Get yourself some help for Tua and it's I don't think two is really going to play that much next year, especially with his injury. So I guess for the immediate future, get help for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who I expect to be the starting quarterback next season. Creed Humphrey has been extremely good for Oklahoma. They could look at a guy like Tyler Bayadaz here from Wisconsin, but I do think Bayadaz has had a lot of benefit from having Jonathan Taylor in the backfield and having other really good linemen around him. So that's why I think Humphrey will be the first interior lineman off the board. Pick 19, Oakland Raiders select Christian Fulton, cornerback from LSU. Fulton had an extremely good season this year. And while I don't think he has a crazy high ceiling, I don't think he has the ceiling of a Jeffrey Okuda or a Paulson Adebo. I do think he has a pretty high floor and the Raiders really need help in the secondary. They could look at off-ball linebacker here, but Dylan Moses is staying in school. And I think this is a little bit high for Kenneth Murray. So for right now, they're going to focus on another need, which is corner. The Raiders really need to add another one. Trayvon Mullen showed flashes last year, but even so, they need a guy next to him, and I think that can be Mr. Fulton. Pick 20, Jacksonville Jaguars select Sean Wade, cornerback from Ohio State. I really like Sean Wade. I think the potential is there. A little bit inexperienced, and I do think he's raw, but I do think he has Tredavious White-esque potential. Wade was mainly the slot corner for Ohio State with Jeff Okuda and Damon Arnett on the outside, and I could see him playing a lot of slot in the NFL, which is where Tredavious White played a lot of at LSU and where Tredavious White is at his best. Pick 21, Philadelphia Eagles select Henry Ruggs, wide receiver from Alabama. At this point until the end of the first round, the order will fluctuate depending on how the playoffs happen, but for right now, the Eagles are here at 21, picking up Mr. Ruggs. And if you like speed, Henry Ruggs is your guy. This man is a burner. I think this is the absolute latest he will go. I could see him getting picked a lot earlier. But with guys like CeeDee Lamb and Jerry Judy falling out of the top 10, this creates a domino effect for the other receivers like Ruggs to slip a little bit. Pick 22, Tennessee Titans select Calevon Chason, edge rusher from LSU. Caleb on Chase Son is a very dynamic player at times, can be a little bit inconsistent, but I do think this is a great fit for the Titans. Have him alongside another speed rusher and Harold Landry, and I think they can be a dynamic duo for years to come, especially with 
Jeffrey Simmons in the middle of their defensive line. I think, and, Jeff, and Jarrell Casey too for the immediate future. I think the Titans will have a very feared front seven if they add Caleb on Chase on. Pick 23, Justin Jefferson, wide receiver LSU to the Buffalo Bills. I think Buffalo needs a dynamic receiver on their offense. John Brown has been a pleasant surprise this year, but I do think they need to get themselves a long-term number one guy. And Jeff Justin Jefferson, in my opinion, proved himself as a first-round prospect last weekend in the college football playoff semifinals. Four touchdown receptions in the first half. Now, yes, he does have the best quarterback in the nation. He does have the luxury of having Jamar Chase on the other side. But still, nonetheless, Justin Jefferson was phenomenal, and I think he has cemented himself as a first-round pick. Pick 24, Minnesota Vikings select Jeff Gladney, cornerback from TCU. I've seen a lot of mock drafts have them go Trayvon Diggs, only because he's Stefan Diggs' brother. And while Trayvon Diggs could be the move here, I think Gladney's going to get picked earlier. I think Jeff Gladney is a guy who not enough people are talking about, and I do think he'll be a first-round pick. Extremely good athlete, extremely dynamic, and I think this is a really nice pick for the Vikings, a team who certainly needs corners, and Mike Zimmer's favorite thing to do is draft cornerbacks. Trey Waynes in 2015 was a first-rounder. Mike Hughes in 2018 was a first-rounder. Neither of them are phenomenal, neither of them are bad, but I do think Gladney has the ceiling to be better than both of them and be the Vikings' long-term number one corner. Pick 25, I have the Miami Dolphins selecting Jonathan Taylor, running back from Wisconsin. So the first running back is off the board. He is headed to the Dolphins. I think offensive line could be a position they look at here. However, why not get yourselves your backfield mate with Tua Tungavailoa? I think Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in this class. He's been super productive all three years at Wisconsin. He's a pretty solid receiver out of the backfield as well. And the Dolphins need a running back really badly. Their leading rusher of this year was Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, part of that is attributed to how bad their offensive line has been, but even so, Kalen Balaj, Patrick Laird, Miles Gaskin, none of those guys are your long-term answer at running back, and I think Jonathan Taylor is. I think Taylor will have an immediate impact. I think the only question with this pick is how will the offensive line do? The offensive line is at least adequate next year. I think Jonathan Taylor will be a monster for this team. Pick 26, Julian Aquara, edge rusher from Notre Dame going to the Seattle Seahawks. I like Julian Aquara, related to Romeo, an edge rusher for my Lions. And Julian Aquara is the type of prospect who I'm quite intrigued by. The talent is there, even if the production doesn't show it. Even if the stats aren't that impressive, we know that Aquara is super talented and he has an extremely high ceiling. Sort of like Rashawn Gary from last year, I think Rashawn Gary is a better prospect than Julian Aquara. And while Rashawn Gary hasn't done a whole lot this year, that's mainly been because of Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith overshadowing him in Green Bay. But I think Rashawn Gary has a lot of potential and I think Julian Aquara does as well. And the Seahawks getting themselves a future edge rusher to either be paired with Jadavian Clowney or replace Jadavian Clowney. I don't expect Clowney to leave Seattle this offseason, but he's been a little bit disappointing, and I don't know if they want to pay him top-tier edge rusher money. Pick 27, New England Patriots select KJ Hamler, wide receiver Penn State. Yes, New England used a first-round pick on a wide receiver last year, and they're doing it again. I love Nikhil Harry. I think he's going to be really good, but I think they need another dynamic playmaker for their offense. He'll be the long-term slot receiver because Julian Edelman isn't getting any younger, and they don't have a lot of talent outside of Nikhil Harry who can be wide receivers of the future. I don't think Jacoby Myers is the long-term answer, and I think having Nikhil Harry and KJ Hamler in the same offense can be really good for whoever their long-term quarterback is. For the immediate future, it'll certainly help out Tom Brady, but he's not going to be the starting quarterback in three, four years from now. So I think having guys like Nikhil Harry and KJ Hamler on this offense will be really good for New England in the short and long-term. Pick 28, Green Bay Packers select T. Higgins, wide receiver from Clemson. I think the Packers have a little bit bigger of needs for the receiver, but I think they're just extremely tempted by the upside that T. Higgins possesses, extremely big-bodied, extremely talented, 
He's been really good these past couple years for Clemson and the height weight speed that T Higgins can bring to the table, having him pair with Devontae Adams, that's scary. That's flat out scary. Pick 29, I had the Chiefs selecting J.K. Dobbins, running back from Ohio State. A little bit of a surprising pick here. I have Dobbins going ahead of DeAndre Swift, as well as Travis Etienne. I know some people would disagree with that, but I think Dobbins has a little bit higher ceiling than both of them. And I think Dobbins has been playing better these past couple weeks rather than DeAndre Swift and Travis Etienne. Neither of those two guys are bad. And I'm not saying I would pick J.K. Dobbins over one of them, but I do think as of right now, I think Dobbins will be picked before them. Going to the Chiefs, a little bit of a surprise pick for Kansas City. I know Chiefs fans might not agree with this pick. They may want to go defense, but I don't think the Chiefs defense is all that bad. Kansas City's defense has been playing really well these past couple of weeks, and I think they're going to continue to play well in the playoffs, which is why I had Kansas City winning the Super Bowl in my playoff predictions. But if their defense isn't as bad like I believe it is, why not go for running back? LeSean McCoy is not the long-term answer. Damian Williams, Daryl Williams, none of those guys are the answer. And none of those guys have been all that good this year. So J.K. Dobbins can be their main running back for the immediate future, and he can be their franchise back. Kansas City's offense is obviously really good as it is. Patrick Mahomes is the most talented quarterback in the league. Tyreek Hill is phenomenal. Travis Kelsey is phenomenal. But getting themselves another playmaker, this is a luxury pick for Kansas City and a very fun luxury pick indeed. Pick 30, I have the New Orleans Saints selecting Trayvon Diggs, corner from Alabama. I really like Trayvon Diggs. I think his stock has dipped a little bit this year, but I do think he should certainly be a first round pick. And I think the Saints could use another corner. Marshawn Lattimore is gonna be a free agent soon. Do the Saints wanna pay him top cornerback money? Even if they do, they need someone next to Marshawn Lattimore. Eli Apple is not the answer. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, not really an outside cornerback. So I think getting a guy like Trayvon Diggs here, probably the best player available, and it fits a need. Good pick for the Saints. Could they look at quarterback? Yes. But I do think they should probably bring back Teddy this offseason, regardless of what happens with Drew Brees. And I think the Saints should look elsewhere rather than corner. Pick 31. The San Francisco 49ers select Xavier McKinney, safety from Alabama. McKinney is extremely versatile. He can play safety, he can play corner, and the Niners could use both. I think secondary is one of this team's few weaknesses. I've seen a lot of mock drafts where they pick running back. I think that would be a bad idea. I don't think they need to pick a running back now. I think their running back by committee with Matt Bruda and Tevin Coleman is good as it is along with Raheem Mostert. I think that's a fine trio. None of those guys are bell cow backs, but I like their running back trio and how they run it. So I don't think they should look at running back here. I think secondary is where they should go. I think their only bona fide player in their secondary is Richard Sherman. He's going to be 32 next year. And they have talent in the secondary. Jaquiski Tart isn't bad, but I do think they need another defensive back. And I think this is a good value for Xavier McKinney. And then pick 32, Ravens select Kenneth Murray, linebacker from Oklahoma. Could have had him going earlier, like to that Raiders pick at 19. But I do think the Ravens want to get themselves a long-term replacement for C.J. Mosley. And while their defense has been fine without C.J. Mosley and without Zadarius Smith, I think they need to focus on defense rather than offense because their offense is more than fine the way it is. They could look at a running back here. Mark Ingram isn't getting any younger, but... I think for right now, I think they should put more of their focus on defense rather than offense with this spot. Now on to the second round, pick 33. The Bengals select Tyler Baidez, center from Wisconsin. Now, the Bengals are really investing in another high pick in a center. I'm going to explain why. Billy Price has not really worked out. He was just a first rounder a couple years ago. And they found a gem in Trey Hopkins, who just signed an extension a couple weeks ago. So why pick another center? Well, Tyler Baidez is versatile. I could see him moving out to guard. You have Trey Hopkins at center, and you try to figure out something with Billy Price, either trying to trade him for probably a late-round pick or maybe slide him over to guard. I think the Bengals could look at doing that. And their offensive line can be a lot better with Baidez being added and then Jonah Williams coming back to the lineup next year, too. Really nice value at 33 for Cincinnati. I could certainly see Baidez being a first-round pick, and... 
Good selection for them. Pick 34, Jordan Love, quarterback, Utah State to the Colts. Love could be a first-round pick. However, I think the production has just not warranted first round. He has a very high ceiling, and in my opinion, he's basically Walmart Josh Allen. He's Josh Allen, but worse, and that's exactly how I described Tyree Jackson last year. I view Jackson as a guy who should go in the second round, but he went undrafted. So that tells me that Jordan Love is far from a first round pick, and I still do see him in the second round. I don't think he's going to get the Tyree Jackson treatment, but I think this is an interesting pick for Indy nonetheless. Jacoby Brissett looked like the real deal for the first half of the year, but then the second half he sort of fell off, and I don't think he's their franchise quarterback. I think he's just going to be the bridge for Jordan Love, and I don't think Love is really going to get the start next year, but I could see him enter the fold as the year goes along. Pick 35, Detroit Lions like Trey Smith, guard from Tennessee. I really like Trey Smith. I view him as a first-round prospect. He can play tackle. He can play guard. A little bit of a medical concern, but I think the talent is there, and I do expect Graham Glasgow to lead this offseason so he can replace Graham Glasgow on the offensive line, and I think he could have the potential to be a little bit better than Glasgow. Pick 36, Yatur Gross Matos. Edge rusher from Penn State to the Giants. Really good value pick. Gross Matos has been a first rounder in pretty much every mock draft I've seen. And I'd probably have him in the late first round on my board. However, with just how the draft has fallen, I have him going in the second round of the Giants. They could look at wide receiver. LaVisca Chenault and Jalen Rager are somehow still available. They could look at off-ball linebacker, but there aren't many who should be going at this spot. So they're going to go with an edge, which is also a need, and Gross Matos, who's also probably the best player on the board. So certainly a win-win scenario for the Giants. Pick 37, Josh Jones, offensive tackle from Houston to the Chargers. The Chargers have really neglected their offensive line the past couple years, and I think it's going to continue to come back to bite them. They need to get a long-term tackle for Justin Herbert, and I think that can be Josh Jones, who's been a pro football-focused darling this year for the Cougars. Pick 38, C.J. Henderson, corner from Florida to the Panthers. This could be a quarterback. This could be Jake Fromm. This could be Jacob Easton. This could be Jalen Hurts. But I don't think a team is going to pick any of those guys this high. And I think the Panthers are just going to pick a position of need in Henderson. He can be the long-term corner alongside Dante Jackson. And C.J. Henderson is basically Greedy Williams, but worse. C.J. Will- Henderson can be a little bit lazy at times. But good athlete, good in coverage, and it seems like he sort of took this year almost off in a way. He was a little bit too lazy certain plays, but I don't think that's him being a bad player. I think that's just him wanting to conserve his health and focusing on the NFL. Pick 39, Curtis Weaver, edge rusher from Boise State to the Dolphins. Weaver is extremely productive, and I do think the Dolphins want to focus on defense too. They used all three first-round picks on offense, getting Tua. Creed Humphrey and Jonathan Taylor, so now they can get themselves a defensive building block in Weaver. And then pick 40, LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver Colorado, to the Cardinals. This is an absolute steal. LaVisca Chenault, in my opinion, is probably a top 20 player in this class, but just with how deep the receivers are this year, there's no need for him to go in the top 20 or even in the first round. The Cardinals can get their potential Number one receiver for Kyler, Bear Larry Fitzgerald replacement. Chenault is a dynamic athlete, dynamic playmaker. I absolutely love this pick for the Cardinals. They've had an A-plus draft so far of getting Jedrick Wills at 8 and LaVisca here at 40. Pick 41, I have the Browns selecting Antoine Whitfield Jr., a safety from Minnesota and the son a former NFL defensive back Antoine Winfield. Antoine Jr. here has really seen his stock go up. This year, great season at Minnesota, led their defense, and I do think the Browns could use another safety in that secondary. They could look at a guy like Hamza Nasir Ladin, who I personally like a little bit more, but they're going to go with Winfield here, who's certainly not a bad pick. Number 42, Jaguars select Jalen Rager, wide receiver from TCU. I really like Rager. I think he's a first-round prospect, but with how deep this receiver class is, he sees him falling to the mid-second round where the Jaguars are going to snag him up. Jalen Rager on one side, DJ Shark on the other side. That's really, really fun. Both of those guys are extremely fast, extremely dynamic. 
pretty similar players. They're both certainly deep threats. And I think that'd be fun for Gardner Minshew or Nick Foles or whoever of his team's quarterback will be in the future. Pick 43, the Chicago Bears select Cole Komet, tight end from Notre Dame. This is an interesting tight end class. I don't think there's going to be any going off the board in the first round. I think the TJ Hawkinson selection taught teams that you shouldn't pick tight ends too, too high. I personally still think Hawkinson can be elite. Maybe that's my Lions bias, but I don't see any going in the first round, and I don't think there's any first round tight ends in this class. So who's the first one off the board? It could be a guy like Hunter Bryant, who I see a lot of Evan Engram in. Could be a guy like Bryson Hopkins out of Purdue. However, I think it'll be Komet, who his stock has really risen these past couple of weeks. If this mock was three weeks ago, the first tight end off the board would probably be Hopkins or Bryant, but now I think it'll be Cole Komet. Trey Burton has been a massive failure for the Bears. Adam Shaheen has been a massive failure. And could they look at quarterback? Yes. But I think they still believe Mitchell Trubisky can be the guy, and I think they're going to try to help him rather than replace him. Pick 44, Colts select Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver from Arizona State. Get themselves a weapon for Jordan Love slash Jacoby Brissett. And then the Colts receiving core is really interesting. You got T.Y. Hilton on the outside. Hilton's not getting any younger, age question marks, but when he's healthy, he's really good. You also got Paris Campbell, a little bit of trouble staying on the field last year, but similar to Curtis Samuel, I think Paris Campbell will come along despite a slow start, and then you got Ayuk in the slot. That's a pretty darn good receiving core. Ayuk's stock has really risen ever since that Oregon game where Maducos got upset, and I do think he could certainly go here. I think if it weren't for the deep receiver class, I could see him going higher. But for right now, I have him at 44. Pick 45, Neville Gallimore, defensive tackle from Oklahoma to the Bucks. Gallimore is a really good player. He's going to test well at the combine. And 45 might be a bit harsh. I could absolutely see him sliding into the first round. But for right now, I do think he'll be here. He's a little bit older than a lot of his other prospects. And I think this is a really nice selection for the Bucks. Get him alongside Vita Vea in the middle of their defense. That's a good duo. Pick 46, Devin Duvernay, wide receiver from Texas to the Broncos. I don't think a lot of people expect Duvernay to go this high, but I could. Duvernay is a poor man's Justin Jefferson, in my opinion. A dependable receiver. Doesn't make all the big plays. Now, Jefferson, I think, does have a few more big plays in his repertoire than Duvernay does. But Duvernay was a safety blanket for Texas this year. While you got the big play guy in Cortland Sutton, I think having a safety blanket on this offense like Devin Duvernay, I think that'd make a ton of sense. Usually your tight end is your safety blanket, but I see Noah Fant as more of a vertical player rather than a short pass guy. So I think adding Devin Duvernay, I think makes a ton of sense for this offense. Pick 47, DeAndre Swift, running back from Georgia. Doesn't have to move too far. He's going to be playing for the Atlanta Falcons. I think with the Devontae Freeman era, is likely over. Freeman has had some injury concerns. It, he almost got traded at the deadline to the Lions. I don't know how I'd feel about that personally, but regardless, I do think the Falcons will be looking for a new running back this offseason, and I think that can be DeAndre Swift, who could go a lot higher than this. Pick 48, Terrell Lewis, edge rusher from Alabama to the Jets. They could look at offensive line here, but I have them getting a pass rusher in Lewis, who's been extremely productive for Alabama. And I think Lewis is safer than any of the offensive linemen on the board. They could look at a guy like Austin Jackson, who has sort of taken a little bit of a three fall here. But I have them making a surprise pick in Terrell Lewis, getting the role that they wanted Ja'Kai Polite to have. Obviously, Polite didn't really work out. So instead, they'll add Mr. Lewis. The Pittsburgh Steelers are definitely a team I could see picking a quarterback. However, with the 49th pick, they will not be drafting a QB, but instead go with Austin Jackson, offensive tackle from USC. And I could see him take a big jump in stock, like how I project Mackie Becton. However, just how the draft has fallen, I think he'll fall to the 49th pick, and the Steelers get an absolute steal. Pittsburgh doesn't desperately need offensive tackle, but... Getting the best player available here absolutely doesn't hurt, and Jackson is a phenomenal value selection for the Steelers. Pick 50, Bears select Nick Harris, center from Washington. The interior of their line isn't bad. They have Cody Whitehair, who I believe is a free agent. I don't know if they extended him or not. They also have James Daniels, who's good. 
but I think they could use a number one, and they're going to add Harris from Washington as, once again, rather than replacing Trubisky, I expect them to help Trubisky. Pick 51, Hamza Nasir Aladin, safety from Florida State to the Cowboys. I hope I said his last name right. Hamza here is one of my favorite players in this draft class. Super athletic, super versatile, and I really like his potential, and I really like this pick for Dallas. Pick 52, Prince Tega Wadahogo, offensive tackle from Auburn to the Los Angeles Rams. Andrew Whitworth, he is a fossil at this point, and they have to start focusing on their replacement for him, and I think they have to improve the offense. Jared Goff was a massive disappointment this year. Todd Gurley as well. Could be part because of his lingering knee injury, but nonetheless, I think they should look to improve their offensive line, adding a proven veteran in Wadahogo. Pick 53, A.J. Terrell, cornerback from Clemson to the Eagles. The Eagles have two glaring needs. Wide receiver, which they kind of addressed by adding Henry Ruggs in the first round. And then corner, which they're going to address here. I think they need corner a little bit more than receiver, with guys like Ronald Darby probably leaving. However, you just can't pass up on Henry Ruggs at 21. And now here, they're going to add a corner and A.J. Terrell. There's a few good late round corners who they could look at. What I mean by late round is late second round, not like fourth or fifth round. I think they could look at Bryce Hall, Jalen Johnson, Cameron Dantzler, even Damon Arnett. There are some good players who they could go with here, but I've been going with Ter Terrell. And nonetheless, the Eagles can't really go wrong with any of those guys. And as long as they add a few corners this offseason, I think they'll be fine. With the 54th pick, the Titans are going to take Darrell Williams, an offensive guard from Mississippi State. I really liked him in last year's pre-draft process. However, he obviously decided to stay in school. And I think this is probably where he would have gone last year. I don't think staying in school did a whole lot. I don't think it dropped his stock, but I don't think it really went up either. And you can never have too many offensive linemen. And for the Titans, I think they could use a little bit of help in the inside. Pick 55, Jonathan Greenard, edge rusher from Florida to the Bills. You can never have too many good pass rushers. And the Bills are missing that dynamic edge rusher. Trent Murphy, Shaq Lawson, they're not bad, but I think adding another one in Greenard could really help out their defense. And then pick 56, Raekwon Davis, defensive tackle from Alabama to the Minnesota Vikings. I think they could use an interior lineman. Davis is another guy who probably would have been a first-round pick last year had he declared. I think him staying in school kind of hurt his stock a little bit. I just don't feel, think he'll be a second-round pick. But I think he would have gone higher last year had he declared rather than this year with him not declaring. Now on to the final eight picks of today's mock draft. Pick 57, I have the Texans selecting Travis Etienne, running back from Clemson. This is a weird pick because the Texans have three good running backs. When he's on the field, Lamar Miller is a good player. He didn't play this year because of his injury, but he's a quality running back. Duke Johnson is a quality running back. Carlos Hyde is a quality running back. None of those guys are bad, but they're missing a dynamic running back, and they have not had one since Arian Foster. So I have him getting ETN here, partly because this is really good value for him. If this is if, if they had a first-round pick, I don't think they're using it on a running back. But with ETN falling here, the Texans are going to swoop him up and add another former standout Clemson Tiger to their offense, joining Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins. Pick 58, Lucas Niang, offensive tackle from TCU. Lucas is a little bit of a project, but I, Seattle has to address the offensive line. Russell Wilson has been able to fare without a good one, but that's just because he's Russell Wilson. He's not getting any younger, and while he's not showing signs of declining yet, and I don't think he will for a while, they still have to add offensive linemen or else he's eventually going to get hurt, and that'll be the end of that. Pick 59, Cameron Dantzler, corner from Mississippi State to the Falcons. I think they could use another corner. Desmond Trufon seems like he's starting to age a little bit. And regardless if they want to hold on to Trufon, I do think they need another one. They've tried to address the position in the past couple of seasons. Isaiah Oliver maybe can develop into something. But I think they need to get a guy like Dantzler, who I think can be a really good player for them. Pick 60, Troy Dye, linebacker from Oregon to the Packers. This hurts me as a Lions fan because Troy Dye is one of my favorite players on the Ducks, but I do think he's going to go to Green Bay here at 60. I think the Packers could use another off-ball linebacker. Blake Martinez isn't bad, but I think they could afford to use another one. 
And Troy Dye is a guy who I do think could be a second round pick. I think Dye certainly has a production. I think he'll test pretty well at the combine. And I could see him around this spot. Pick 61, Jalen Johnson, cornerback, Utah to the Kansas City Chiefs. Here's your defensive player, Chiefs fans. I think their biggest need on defense is corner. Kendall Fuller is a free agent. And even with or without him, I think they could use another outside cornerback. Their safety tandem, Juan Fornhill and Ty Tyra Matthew, really good. But I do think they need to add another corner. Pick 62, Zach Bond, edge rusher. Can also play a little bit of off-ball linebacker from Wisconsin to the Dolphins. And this is a guy whose name could continue to go up. I just really heard of him a couple days ago, and he seems like he's talented. And I do think the Dolphins could use him on their defense. They added an edge rusher in Curtis Weaver. They're looking pretty good at off-ball linebacker and Raquan McMillan and Jerome Baker, but I do think they could use the versatility that someone like Zach Braun brings. Pick 63, Lakey Fotu. Defensive tackle from Utah to the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks picked multiple Utah defenders last year on day two, adding Marquise Blair and Cody Barton, and I have them getting another one. Defensive tackle is an interesting position. The Seahawks have talent there, Puna Ford, Jerron Reed, but Reed is an impending free agent, and he's missed some time due to suspensions and injuries. Puna Ford, he's not that good. I mean, Puna Ford's decent, but I do think that you could use a guy like Lake Hifo too here. And then the final pick of the mock draft, Bryce Hall, cornerback from Virginia to the Ravens. Excellent value. Bryce Hall is first-round talent without a question. But he suffered an injury this year, and I do see his stock dropping a little bit because of it. Plus, this is a really deep cornerback class. But nonetheless, I find it ridiculous that he's still on the board here at 64. And while the Ravens have Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, they could use another guy behind those two. And Bryce Hall is easily the best player available. So that'll end the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of season two of the three minutes on the clock podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, have a good one. Peace out. Have a good one. I already said have a good one. Why'd I say that twice? Oh, well. Bye-bye.